yes, no. Yes, X will tell still be here, but you must have counted that in about 10 minutes time. Right, John? Goodbye. He puts the phone down and goes to the divan on the left, where there is a travelling bag and starts packing. While he is thus engaged, another man similar in build to Gerard enters from the right silently and revolver in hand. He is flashly dressed in an overcoat and a soft hat. He bumps accidentally against the table and at that sound, Gerard turns quickly. Why, this is a surprise, mister. I'm glad you're pleased to see me, but you're not pleased for nothing. Put those balls up. This is all very melodramatic. Not very original, perhaps, but try to be calm and mm, non-salad. Non-salad is your word, I think. Thanks a lot, but you'll soon stop being so smart. I'll make you grow. But first, I would like to know a few things about you. Anything you like. I know all the answers. But before we begin, I should like to change my position because you may be comfortable, but I'm not. Sit there and no funny business. Hmm. Now let's have a nice little talk about you. At last, a sympathetic audience. I tell you a story of my life, the tower in which I was stolen by the gypsies. And why at the Keep it to yourself and just answer my questions. You live here alone? Well, do you? I'm sorry. I thought that you were telling me, not asking me. A question of inflection. Your voice is unfamiliar. <clears throat> do you live here alone? And if I don't answer? I think you have got enough sense not to want to get hurt. I thought that good sense is shown more in the ability to avoid fear. Then in me I decided to do so. What do you think, mister? Never mind money, but I like yours better, Mr. Gerard. By the way, what's your Christian's name? Vincent Charles. And do you run a car? No. That's a lie. You are not dealing with a fool. I'm smart as you and even smarter than you. This is a gun, not a toy. I can hurt you without killing and still get my answers. Of course. If you put it like that, I'll be glad to assist you. I do possess a car and it is in the garage around the corner. That's good. Do people often come out here? Very rarely. Surprisingly, a few people take the trouble to visit me. There is a baker, a greengrocer, of course, a milkman, quite charming, but no one so interesting as you. I happen to know you never see tradespeople. You seem to have taken a considerable amount of trouble. Since you know so much about me, what do you say something about yourself? You have been so noticed. I could tell you plenty. You think you are smart, but I am the topper of the class round here. I have brains and I use them. That's how I have got where I have. Huh. And your pricely as you got? It did require a great brain to break into my little cottage. When you will know why I have broken into this cottage, you will be surprised and it won't be a present surprise, mister. Okay, with you figuring so largely in it, that is understandable. By the way, which particular line of crime do you have Or aren't you a specialist? My speciality is jewel robbery. Your car will do me a treat. It's a tailly dandy bus. I am afraid. Jewels are few and far between in the wilds of Essex. So are the corpse. I can retire her nicely for a little while. You mean to live with me? A trifle sudden, isn't it? You have not been invited. You won't be here for long, so I didn't trouble to ask. What do you mean? This is your big surprise. I'm going to kill you. Oh, a little harsh, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be sorry to do it, as I've taken a fancy to you, but this has got to be done. Why do I murder to other crimes? It's a great step you are taking. I'm not taking it for fun. I have been hunted for long enough. I have murdered already and they can't hang me for twice. You are planning a gratuitous trouble, so to speak. Admit it, you have nothing to lose but what to gain? I have freedom to gain. And as for myself, I am a poor hunted rat. Being Vincent Charles rat, I can go to palaces and do nothing. I can eat well, sleep well and without having a beat at the sight of corpse. In most small romances, the villain is enough foolish, enough foolish to delay his killing long enough to be frustrated. You are much luckier. I am okay. I have got reason to everything. I am going to be Vincent Charles Gerard and now I know how he talks like. See. This is VC Gerard speaking. Get up a minute and now have a look at me. Hmm. You are not particularly decorative. This is nothing. Your, your clothes will be fit me fine. And what about your clothes? They let you down. If you are not careful. That will be alright. Action. This is bag alright. Then this is gun alright. And what's all this? This is for the stats and what not. Now, do you believe me? I don't know. Oh, come on. For God's sake, clear that bit ahead of yours and let's go. Come with me in my car. I can use you. If you manage a frame, you will have got me in the car and you have still got your gun. Maybe you are right. Then don't waste time. Let's go. Careful, boss. I'm watching you. Listen, I have posted a man on the main road. He'll make it ring if he saw the police. Come on. The telephone bell rings. They are after us. From here, straight to garage. How do I know that you are telling me? Oh, don't be fooled. Look for yourself. Come. 